core of that technology is these furnaces. There are about 60 at the Salem facility, most of which were busily making sapphire at the time of my visit. Inside these cylinders, at thousands of degrees, is where the material that ultimately forms an unscratchable smartphone display is forged. So here's how that's done. A sapphire seed, about the size and shape of a hockey puck, is placed at the bottom of a single-use molybdenum barrel called a crucible. The crucible is then filled with a mixture of condensed corundum, which is a crystalline form of aluminum oxide, and a material called crackle, which is uncrystallized sapphire material left over from previous runs. The full crucible is then placed inside the furnace, where it sits atop a finger, a small platform cooled by liquid helium that prevents the sapphire seed from melting too early. The whole shebang is sealed, the air is evacuated, and the temperature is brought up to 2200 degrees Celsius to allow the materials to melt together. The temperature varies as the material is put through a series of cooling cycles over the next 16 or 17 days. During that time, the sapphire slowly crystallizes from bottom to top, and the end result is this, a cylindrical section of industrial sapphire called a boule. The typical recipe produces a 115 kilogram boule, chemically identical to the sapphire dug from the ground. Boules are marked and separated into more and less desirable regions. Cores can be drilled and cuts made for various applications, like LED production or the manufacturing of airplane windows. Making a smartphone display out of this sapphire material is fairly simple. A rectangular section of specific dimensions is cut, smaller for iPhones and Virtus, larger for Galaxy Notes and the like. It's polished, not just to increase clarity, but to strengthen it further. Then it's cut into the appropriate thickness and polished some more. A few hole punches for button and speaker penetrations, and voila! A thin, light screen protector harder than Gorilla Glass, Harder even than any material except for diamonds, a practically unscratchable display coating. Jeff told me that accessory applications like that are already in the works from other companies, but GT Advanced is also hoping to coordinate with OEMs to include Sapphire screens on smartphones right out of the box. Cost continues to be a big factor, but the gap is narrowing. Where several months ago Sapphire displays cost about $30 per smartphone, the company told me that current figures are more like $15 with next-generation technology like reusable crucibles coming in the next 12 to 18 months to bring that figure down further to less than 10 bucks a screen. It's not the $3 per screen that Gorilla Glass is said to cost, but it's definitely much closer. Again, you'll see other companies pushing Sapphire smartphone screens much more aggressively under their own brands at first, but get ready for a general Sapphire awareness campaign coming soon. When finished, the samples are removed and loaded into a ring-on-ring -ring strength test. The meter indicates the number of pounds pressing down on the sample. Here the sapphire breaks at 161 pounds. The Gorilla Glass withstands over two and a half times as much force.